shall find all the disparate fragments of my mind. Well, friends, Greenland is a place where souls go to dry out. It is a vast and terrifying place of ice fields and tundra. Bereft of fire, and in the horror of its imposing irrelevance, there's a kind of kind of peace. A piece of pain, a piece of nothing, friends. I am going to Greenland. <laughs> Some of the crew left, they went to pick up the hydrographers. Hydrographers are people who specialize in mapping the seafloor. And now we were finally in this position where we can start getting the boat ready for one of the most important aspects of the expedition, which is mapping the last uncharted areas of Greenland. A single beam sonar has one beam that comes down from the boat, hits the seafloor, and back up. And from that, it can measure the depth. A multi-beam, this one in particular, had 1,029 beams, all shooting out simultaneously. But it gives us a true 3D image of the seafloor. So this is Sermilla Garsuk Fjord. There are two glaciers in here. The one on the northern side is an ocean terminating glacier, and the one on the southern side is a land retreated glacier. And so we intend to map this uncharted fjord over the next two days. So still 75% of the ocean floor, which is roughly about half of this planet, has not been mapped. People know almost nothing about what it's like. It's not just the charts. We're not actually mapping purposefully for that. We're actually looking at more scientific value here, models that describe Greenland and the ice sheet and how thick it is and how fast it's melting. And this is ground zero for climate change. This is one of the first places that are going to get affected in any big way. And it's already happening as far as glaciers retreating at an exponential rate. Every year, three Chesapeake Bay's worth of water are getting running off of the Greenland ice shelf. So it is shrinking faster than it's growing. It is Although a very harsh environment, it's also a very fragile environment. These little dips, these valleys, are all locations where glaciers had once receded into the ocean, like uh, an ice waterfall, all frozen and slowly moving. When you have the ice, when you have the glaciers, this is like a, a healthy sign of a polar coastal ecosystem. It is, it's incredible, the landscape here. It's just like, look at the glacier, it's far away, and then you thought, uh, it seems to be not that big. But when I close it to it, it's just like, oh my God, that's huge. But I'm just talking about myself. When you think about society, we do have the power to destroy it as a group, you know, as human beings. As just me here, it's just like, oh my God, I'm so tiny. But as society, we do have the power to destroy our planet. So. I've been thinking about it a lot. Well, one of my crew didn't see a chunk of ice, hit it at about seven miles an hour, went underneath the boat and hit the propeller. I have a, a boat in Greenland uh, by Pamiet, and the propeller uh, is uh, broken, is bent from ice, and I need to take the, the boat 
out of the water and change the propeller, put on a new propeller. No, I mean, I think we know that the name of the boat yard in Nuke we get hauled out in, and that's about it. But now we gotta try to find a prop and figure out what all that's gonna take. And you have the money to do all this? Sort of. What do you mean? Uh, yes and no. I mean, yes, of course, but it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt badly. I never understood why they called that Gatorade, you know, the one that looks like this color. I think it's Arctic Frost. Yeah, Arctic, Arctic Frost. Frost. I was like, yeah, that didn't look like Arctic Frost. What did that I know? You. Fucking never seen that Arctic Frost. Uneducated fucking schmo talking shit. On the way to Nuke, we were also taking water samples so we could better understand sediment in the different areas. It's gonna kill me before it saves me. What, what happens if there is a bear and we have no guns? Is it just every man for himself? It means you get into the day and run like, swim like hell, run like hell. So you have this river coming down now from the ice sheet where a glacier once was. And so we're here getting a water sample so we can look at how the chemistry and the nutrients change from where the um, stream water reaches the coastline uh, compared to what we saw a little bit downstream in the fjord. Now I have to try it to see if it's better. The flaming Trevor. <laughs> Obviously that's how we're doing it from now on. Just the fact to be in a random place in the middle of nowhere with no communication, uncharted waters, foggy, icebergs. Uh, I love this. And I just realized that I will be doing this for the rest of my life. Like, I'm oceanographer. And I love to be here. Uh, we are in Nuuk, the grand capital, and uh, in Nuuk, just like most all of Greenland, there are no facilities for visiting yachts. There are no marinas, there are no slips, there's nowhere to tie off to, so you have to just figure it out. I mean, we could try to tie off to this red guy. I mean, he doesn't look like he's going anywhere. He's got a light on. 20. I mean, we're toasting. That's gotta have Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Cheers. 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 Mapping. Mapping Woo. of the gapping. So, uh, Going Bye. where no hydrographer has gone before. Yeah. Woo. Uh, over there, and then we got it on both sides down there, boy. I'm not going to be about time to be going on the ladder now. <laughs> we're going out here when I get on the ground. Fix the prop. Copy prop. Mm, nuke. Please support our next haul out at oceanresearchproject.org, our Patreon, or click the link below. Woo! That's Very great. jazzy. <laughs>